I ended up knowing a lot of this stuff. So I sat down and, and uh, when, I, when I told Marshall Smith I would like to have uh, the classified portions of Project Blue Book. And so, I, so that's when I said to Marshall Smith, and I said, uh, look, if uh, you're asking us to me to deliver this, uh, this three-hour seminar to the top 50 scientists at SETI on the theological implications of contact, you know, I'd really like to be able to get at some of the other documentation that we're gathering together uh, for the president so that I can be better prepared. And she said, uh, well, what would, you, what would you like to see? And I said, uh, oh, I'd like to see the classified portions of Project Blue Book. Uh, and she said, well, I don't, I don't think they're going to let us have those, you know. And How much I said, did you know about Project Blue Book at that time? I knew a lot about Project Blue Book at that time. And you had studied oh, yes. it, I oh, guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew, I knew all about Project Blue Book. For people yeah. out there who are unfamiliar and listening, can you just explain what that was? This, is the, this was the third of, uh, fourth, actually, of a series of studies that was done by the United States Air Force. This went on from 1952 to 1967, uh, 1969, actually, as it turns out. Uh, in that they purported to be investigating the sightings of, of the UFOs, uh, and that they uh, it was it was it's been now revealed uh, beyond any dispute whatsoever that it was a total cover up, right? Uh, and that there were over seven hundred sightings that they were totally unable to explain away. There were just too many credible sources. There were there were too many radar uh, readings, uh, photographs, et cetera, that they so there was an entire section of Project Blue Book that was classified. Uh, but the public part of it, they tried to explain away virtually all of the sightings, saying that, oh, this was like searchlights, you know, reflecting off the bottom of clouds, uh, or it was uh, flocks of birds that you misperceived, or it was like a regular airplane of some sort, or it was Venus, or it was swamp gas. Or a balloon. Yeah, or a balloon, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so they had all these these bogus explanations for all this, right? So, and I'd, I'd been following this very closely because, as I, I indicated to you yesterday, I was going to go to the Air Force Academy to become an astronaut because I was very interested in trying to figure out how we were going to relate to this extraterrestrial civilization. And I thought that during my lifetime, this was going to come to pass. And so that uh, I was paying a lot of attention to this, trying to figure out how to be prepared to do this. So I'd become very familiar with a lot of all the in individual sightings, the contacts, et cetera. So I'd spend a, a fair amount of time monitoring this whole process as I was doing everything else in the world. Back then, we didn't have Google, though, and stuff. No. So are you just like hitting the library and finding mm -hmm. anything you can there? Yeah. That's pretty much it? Yeah. Just What's even available? Because there's so much there. There's a, there's a easier ability to just completely hide things back then because there's not as much mass communication. That's right. No, no. It was you had to want to find it, you know. But there were lots of stuff in you know Popular Mechanics and Scientific American, and there was mm. lots of that. There were lots of uh, magazines that were uh, astronomers, you know, talked with each other about it. There were scientific magazines. So I just I, I was fortunate. I had access to libraries, and so I would spend time you know, learning about this. Uh, and so, so I ended up, uh, I ended up knowing a lot of this stuff. So I sat down and, and, uh, when I, when I told Marshall Smith, I would like to have uh, the classified portions of project Blue book, she said, Oh, I, I'm sure they're not going to let us have that. I said, well, do you have to ask them? I said, if you don't ask them, you're never, we're never going to get it. You uh, were asking Congress? She, no, she was Congress. She was the Congressional Research Service in Science Technology. So she would contact the Defense Department oh, wow. as the official representative of Congress, you know, saying, look, we want to know this. We're doing research on this. We want these documents. <laughs> Danny Sheehan yeah. wants the blue yeah. book. So, so she just said that, you know, that uh, we we who have been asked to do the, the research by President Carter, you know, want to get access access to the classified portions of Project Blue Book. And she called me back a couple of weeks later, and she was totally astonished that they'd agreed to do this. Uh, and she said, uh, yeah, you, you just you have to go over to the new Madison building. Uh, that it was the new wing of the, the Library of Congress. They just completed building. What was it, the catch? There was... That there wasn't one, as it turns out. Really? No. They, they, they said that I had the right to go over to do it. I had to bring two forms of uh, identification. A photo official government identification. So I brought my passport, my my DC driver's license, my my uh, bar association cards. You know, for both the Southern District of New York and for the for Washington DC. So I brought those with me. Uh, and then you know, I I went over to the Madison Building on this uh, Saturday morning. 
and uh, and uh, went up to the the main door, and here are these two suits, these guys, guys, just both standing there on the opposite sides of the door. Now, now these are not OSI guys. I mean, I know OSI guys, but they look like it wasn't the Office of Special Investigations of the Air Force. These were uh, SF guys. I mean, these are Special Forces guys, uh, and they were standing there guarding the door. Uh, they asked me for my ID. I showed them my ID, uh, and uh, and so I I went in. Uh, to the to the hallway, uh, and uh, and there wasn't anybody in the building. It was completely brand new, uh, brand spanking new. Not a soul in the building, and so I end up going down, walking down the the hallway, uh, down to the elevator, get in the elevator, and I just happened to think I I opened up my briefcase and took out a yellow pad, a yellow legal pad, and just put it under my arm. Uh, and uh, go down to the basement. Uh, the door opens. I see that I look down the hallway on the left, and there's a light shining out of the room down there. Two other suits down there waiting, you know. So I go all the way down there. They say, you got to leave your briefcase here. Uh, you know, you can't take any notes. Uh, you can't record anything. You can't uh, take any photographs of anything. Uh, so I said, uh, okay, so in I go. So Were I, you worried I, someone was going to whack you no, at any point? No, no. no. You're nope. just fearless going down no. to this very secretive yeah. government hallway. No, well, it was it was the Library of Congress. I mean, uh-huh. it was Madison Building, you know. So so I go in, you know, and here are these, you know, there's uh, like four cardboard fold out tables, you know, uh, uh, two on one side and two on the other side. The room is about maybe twenty feet wide, fifteen feet deep. And there are these four card tables there, and there was this microfiche machine. It's really old timey kind of tinny microfiche machine. Yeah, what's a you microfiche? Know, microfiche is these these little canisters that they have, uh, like little film canisters, and they like film strips in them okay. that have got documents. Yeah, uh, they're yeah. photographs of documents yeah. and stuff. And so the, the and there were these little shoebox, uh, large shoebox size boxes. Uh, with a little st- string tie on them, you know the little figure eight string tie yeah. thing, and uh, and uh, so I went and sat down, take off my jacket, and sit down, lay down the the yellow pad over there on the table, and uh, I start to go through the boxes. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.